What would you think if the entire history of the Catholic Church was actually planned and predicted in the ancient pages of the Old Testament? What if the Catholic Church's history followed the Old Testament history of Israel, event for event, and in the same chronological order? This is what God has caused to happen, and he has hid this marvel from us right out in the open and before us all. What would you think? Would you be skeptical? Continue watching for the next few minutes to see that this is actually true. In the Old Testament, Abraham's faith and willingness to obey was very pleasing to God. He became the father of many nations. His wife Sarah was visited by angels who announced the miraculous conception of a child and gave the child his name Isaac. In the church's history, St. Joseph's faith and obedience was very pleasing to God. St. Joseph is the patron saint of the Universal Church. Our Lady was visited by an angel who announced the miraculous conception of the Son of God, and the angel also gave the child his name Jesus. Both the Israelites and the Catholic Church were founded with twelve. Our Lord had twelve apostles and Jacob had twelve sons. St. Peter was special among the other eleven, and so was Joseph, Jacob's son. Joseph was given a ring by Pharaoh and put in charge of all of Egypt, and St. Peter was given the keys and put in charge of the whole church. Both the Israelites and the Christians eventually fell into a long, harsh persecution. The Israelites in Egypt and the Christians in Rome. Moses delivered the Israelites and Constantine legalized Christianity. After their deliverance, the Israelites went out into the wilderness, where they immediately complained that they had no water. Moses struck the rock and water came out for the people. Upon legalizing Christianity, Constantine built the new city of Constantinople out in the wilderness. The city had no water, so a very large stone aqueduct was built for the people. After getting a land of their own, each had a period of fighting many enemies and establishing themselves. The Israelites in the Promised Land had to fight a host of enemies. God commanded them not to make any compromises with their enemies. The faith became legal, and soon a host of heresies arose to attack the faith. No compromise could be made with heresies or heretics. God sent judges to deliver the Israelites from their enemies and the church fathers battled and defeated the early heresies. In this period, Ruth converted and became David's ancestor. And in the period of the church fathers, Clovis converted and set the stage for Charlemagne. After this period, each people saw the rise of a great and long-lasting dyna dynastic holy kingdom. In the Old Testament, King David started the, the Davidic kingdom, which lasted until Nebuchadnezzar. In the church's history, Charlemagne started the Holy Roman Empire, which lasted until Napoleon. King David fought many wars to defend and expand the nation of Israel, and the kings of Europe fought to crusades to defend Christendom. David's successor, Solomon, marked the Golden Era with his wisdom, wealth, and architecture. The Renaissance, which followed the Crusades, is marked by renewed knowledge, art, wealth, and architecture. Immediately after this period came the period of revolt and separation. As soon as Solomon died, the nation of Israel was split in two. Jeroboam led the ten tribes away from the covenant. And just around the end of the Renaissance, Christendom was also split in two. Martin Luther led the Protestant revolt. After the ten tribes split, a series of wars were fought between the North and Southern Kingdoms. And after the Protestant Revolt, a series of wars were fought between the Protestants and Catholics. Foreign powers rose and conquered the divided tribes, and the Ottoman Empire rose and conquered much of Eastern Europe. God's people were now severely weakened, and foreign powers began to invade. The northern tribes were scattered and lost their heritage as Israelites. 
Protestantism fractured and fragmented until they forgot their Catholic heritage. Nebuchadnezzar invaded and took captive several kings of Judah. And Napoleon took the Papal States and took captive two popes. Nebuchadnezzar put an end to the Davidic Kingdom and Napoleon put an end to the Holy Roman Empire. The Jews lost their land and were taken prisoners in Babylon. And the Kingdom of Italy took the Papal States and the popes were prisoners in the Vatican. After 70 years in exile, the Jews were granted to go back to Jerusalem. And after 69 years, the Church signed the Lateran Treaty. After their return, the Jews had autonomy over the new city-state of Jerusalem. And after the Lateran Treaty, the Church had autonomy over the new Vatican City, also a city-state. The Jews had to swear allegiance to the Persian Empire and pray for the Persian King. And in the Lateran Treaty, Italian bishops have to swear allegiance to Italy and pray for the Italian government. A little while after the decree of Cyrus, a man named Haman was conspiring to kill all the Jews in the Persian Empire all at once. Queen Esther, a Jew, interceded to the king on behalf of her people and risked her life in approaching the king. A little while after the Lateran Treaty, Hitler rose in Europe and severely persecuted the Catholic Church, especially in Poland. Pope Pius XII interceded on behalf of the underground German resistance against the terms of the Lateran Treaty. He was risking being attacked by Hitler and also was risking that Vatican City would be taken by the Italians for breaking the Lateran Treaty. And finally, shortly after the Book of Esther comes the Books of the Maccabees. The Greeks conquered the ancient world and their kingdom was split into four parts. The Greek king Antiochus tore down all the ornaments in the temple. He put up a second altar and he mandated a new pagan sacrifice. One old priest rebelled and fled to the hills. He died and he passed on his rebellion to his sons, the Maccabees. Shortly after the fall of Hitler, the Allies controlled Europe. After the war, Germany was divided into four parts. After Vatican II, the ornaments were taken down in countless churches across the world. A second altar was put up in every Catholic church and a new sacrifice was mandated, the Novus Ordo. One old bishop rebelled and he started a traditional Catholic seminary in the Alps. Shortly before he died, he consecrated four bishops to carry on the rebellion. The story continues to unfold from here. Study and read the books of the Maccabees to see what has become of the Maccabean revolt before the first coming of Christ. The whole history of Israel in the Old Testament is a complete prefigurement of the history of the Catholic Church. However, there are also other prefigurements of Catholic history that do not appear chronologically, yet they are undeniably a foreshadowing nonetheless. God is omnipotent and marvelous. If you are skeptical, ask yourself, could God have done this? And would it be like God to cause the Old Testament to mirror the church's history in great detail without us even realizing it? All glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Subscribe to Maccabean Uprising because there are many videos still to come.